This is part three of I Was a Nomad Before It Was Cool. Last we left, I was in Japan. And just a brief recap, I was living in Boulder, Colorado, and I decided to teach English in Japan. And I started out, I moved to Fukuyama, Japan, and then Takayama afterwards, which is, which is in the Japan Alps. And I stayed in Japan for two and a half years, close to three years. And I say two and a half because there are a few things that came into play during my stay in Japan. One was while I was working in the United States, I was working in a very high stress job and that is architecture. So I worked 60 hours a week. I was always stressed out. I was just, I was wound up tight like a ball of just and when I got to Japan and I said before, you know, to go from working 60 hours a week to 25 hours a week. And all I did was in my spare time was explore Japan, learn Japanese. I did art classes. I began to relax. And I'm not talking about just relax as in, you know, you go on vacation and stay on the beach for two weeks. I mean, there were a lot of things that just didn't ruffle my feathers like they did when I was in the U.S. And I'm not blaming the U.S. I'm not blaming architecture, but I do think it's the nine to five work life that that wheel that we get on or what we like to call the rat race. I think that it was more that than any one specific thing. It was a lifestyle, a cult, the work culture. So in Japan, after a while, I started to relax and, and I felt freer. I felt like, well, I felt like someone should feel when they're in their 30s. I felt, well, 20s too, but I was 30 at the, well, let's not get into the man. But I was definitely in my 30s. I think you should feel free like there, you know, there are limitless options. You can do anything. And I was beginning to feel that way again, like I did when maybe I was in high school. So I was happy. But at the same time, there are a few things about being in Japan that all foreigners know. First of all, when I say foreigners, yeah, I know we like to talk about race a lot these days, but in Japan, it's a little bit different. So yes, I'm a black woman and we have foreigners who, you know, there are men who are white or women who are white, whatever country. The Japanese sort of see us all as Westerners. We're all foreigners. So for them, all that matters is you're not Japanese. <laughs> and I'm not faulting that, but my point is no matter how much you master Japanese, you get to know the culture, no matter how hard you work to integrate, you will always be seen as a Westerner, a foreigner. And there is not really a stigma with that. There's no stigma. The Japanese are very, very friendly and open to foreigners who come. If you're a Westerner, they, they're, they, there's not really that kind of problem. But at the same time, it's still as if there's an inner circle that no matter what you do, you'll never be a part of. And that's opposed to, well, most European countries, if you conform, speak the language, you, you put in a lot of effort, you'll still, yes, yeah, still see, well, you're an American, but there's no secret society that you'll never get to know. Anyhow, um, so that kind of sort of bother me just a bit. Bother isn't the right word, but if you want to talk about living somewhere for a very long time, 10, 20 years or forever, that was sort of a thing. And by the way, I think that applies to most of Asia. So it doesn't matter where, if you're seen as a Westerner, you're always going to be just a Westerner. It's weird if you speak the local language. That's okay. I'll, I'll stop. Anyhow, so there was that one thing. No, I can't, no matter how much I like Japan. I can't live here indefinitely. I'll never be seen as part of the community. Uh, and the second thing that I didn't realize right away, but many other foreigners warned me of this, there, there's a there's sort of an unspoken cutoff time. A lot of the Westerners who stay past three years, you, you, the longer you stay, you tend to get a little bit weird. And 
I think it's because really as a foreigner, when you are living in Japan, the Japanese look out for you. Everything's taken care for you, which is probably why I was very unstressed. Um, you don't have to worry about bank accounts, money, anything. Everything is taken care cared of for you. If there's something you don't know how to do, it's not that, well, sort of, well, you're a foreigner, how would you know? Um, Japanese people will step up and help you. They're, they're very kind people and very understanding on that. So it's easy to stay and almost get too comfortable. So with all that in mind, I'll get to the point. It was sort of in my mind, well, I do while I enjoy Japan, I'm not really going to stay here forever. Anyhow, I decided to, I did like, I, I, I really did like teaching English. And I did show up with no experience, just being a native English speaker was enough. So I decided, well, I should probably, if I'm going to continue teaching and I'm not going to stay in Japan for the rest of my life, I should get some other, I should get a credential, you know, that certifies that I, I know what I'm doing and also sort of learn how to teach English correctly because we, that's, a, that's another story, teaching English in Japan. But anyhow, um, I signed up for a TEFL course and TEFL, it's T-E-F-L and the acronym, the acronym is Teaching English as a Foreign Language. You might have heard TESOL, that's Teaching teachers of English to students of other languages. Uh, all of those are the, you hear variations of that acronym, but it is pretty much the same idea. A TEFL course is a four week course uh, that native English speakers take so that they can learn how to teach English specifically to speakers of other languages, to speakers whose first language is not English and you use that certificate to travel around the world. And that is essentially what I did. So I decided I wanted to take that course. And as I had saved up a lot of money, I decided I wanted to go to Thailand to do it. So I went to Thailand and I took the course. And I was, uh, I was in a little town south of Bangkok along the beach. And I loved it. I really, I just, I really enjoyed Thailand. But remember, this was a long time ago. I, I'm scared to know what Thailand is like now. I just think it's overrun with foreigners. <laughs> Even though, yes, I know I am a foreigner, but too much of a good thing. Anyhow, um, I loved it. And soon after the course was finished, a kind soul offered me a job. And the old me... The uptight, stressed, everything's got to be perfect Gil would have said, no, I have, you know, I have commitments where I live. But I started thinking, I, although I'll admit my first reflex was to say no. But as I started thinking, I'm like, no, I'm this, I'm a free spirit now. Why can't I go? Why can't, well, sorry, why can't I stay? But yeah, all my stuff obviously was in Japan. So it was sort of, I went back to return to Japan to collect my things. And I returned, which were, I didn't have a lot. I had just my trusty backpack. Well, a big hiking backpack. And I returned to live in Thailand. And I'll stop here and you'll find out what happens next in part four.